Alright guys, welcome back. Um, in today's video I'm going to discuss on how to use the Ultimate Motorcycle Physics. In this video I'm going to be more straightforward. And I'm going to be going to explain in details more. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to change the default bike model to this dirt bike here. So that's very it's very easy. All you have to do is make sure your model is uh, is separated, as divided into separate parts, like the neck, the body, and the and the wheels. Like if you if you select my dead bike here, my dead bike, you observe that the, you have the suspension, separate game object. You have the body of the bike, also separate game object, and uh, I have the neck. Of the bike which is also a separate game object and I have the rear wheel which is also separate from the body so next thing I'm going to drag the whole dead bike model and child this to the simple bike IK support in your test in the test scene right here so I drag this guy and I child I've child it to the simple bike I can support prefab. Next I'm going to reset the position. Yeah. Disable the gizmos so you can see that. If you observe now I reset the position. Now the bike, the dead bike and the simple bike IK support and I am in the same position. Now I can now go ahead and disable the uh, the motorbike mo the motorbike model. And just by disable that one, so that the body of the, uh, the older bike has been disabled. You can disable it. You can delete it. It's your choice. But I'm going to disable this for uh, this video's sake. Next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up the. The hinge joint for the neck of the bike. So I'm going to move back to my dead bike and screw down to the neck, which holds the head of the bike. And then I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm going to call this neck hinge. Neck hinge. So I'm going to go. Change my view from perspective to auto, to auto mode, so as a 2D mode, and I'm going to switch to front view, and then zoom in a bit. Yeah. All right. Now that you are zoomed in, you can take the neck hinge game object and place it right there in the center of the of the motorcycle neck, as where you want the pivot points to be of the motorcycle neck. Basically, when you that neck is rotating. Once you rotate at that point, you can also check it from the top. Yeah, it's, it looks fine from the top. The next thing I'm going to drag the neck game object and child this to the neck hinge game object. So what this does is uh, go back to the perspective. Thank you. 
the rotation of the suspension of the front wheel suspension of this dead bike is not in a straight line. It's not. In a, I mean, it's not. In, it's not. It's not in a straight line. So we're going to like rotate the front wheel game objects and the X axis until it's facing the actual rotation of the suspension there. So let's say negative. Mesh into the 
this lot so that basically when your wheel your, your bike tire moves with the suspension the suspension mesh also follows to make things more realistic you can also do the same thing to the rear the rear wheel mesh Separate game objects. Then you're gonna do the same thing you did to 
so we have all the animation clips here we have the grounded animation we have the pickup bike so all you need to do is if you have your own animation you can always replace them replace them with the existing animation the animation controller is already created for you for you already so all you need to do is just you can double click on this animation here for humanoid work you can change the clip you can always change the clip from here so I've already gone through the stress of creating the animation network for you. So all, this, all that is left is that if you don't like the animations, the default animation, you can always replace replace it with your own animation animations. So let's go back. Let's go back to third person controller. Yeah. So back to the same view. Then we have the default item model there. We have the robot Kai. I'm going to drag Kai robot and child this to the third person character controller and then reset the position as usual. And we have the position reset. We can disable item character model there. And then select the Kai robot there and duplicate, duplicate it. So we have two. The first one will be we call this uh, FPS for FPS camera. The first body mesh should be for the FPS camera, and the, the duplicated one should be for the third person. So I'm going to call this TPS for third person. Then next, I'm going to select the third person controller IK, and then scroll down to the, e the ES Universal Character Controller script there, and I'm going to select third person. And you can select it all the first person. So in this video, I'm going to discuss on third person first. Then we have you have the third person camera set up. You have the first person camera set up for you. Now you, you observe the first person body part mesh render. So what's what is here is it ends body. We don't need this again. So I'm going to reset the size this to zero. And then we're gonna drag robot Kai body mesh so this is the body mesh of robots robot 2 and drag this I'm gonna drag that there and then for the first person grab your character I'm gonna drag this whole robot guy and place this here and for the third person grab the other I'm gonna drag this third, third, the third person the duplicated version of it and drag it and place it there for the for the avatar yeah for the avatar I think the robot should have his own avatar. So let's go back to the model. Yeah, we have right, right, the Kai has his own avatar, so we're gonna replace we're gonna replace the avatar here with the robot's avatar. So we're gonna drag the robot guy's avatar. Drag that there, we're gonna drag it and place it. Both the, we're gonna use the same avatar for the first and the third. So here will be the, the bob settings, the head bob settings for your first person view. Yeah, this one, this settings will not work for the third person, only first person. Then you can set the head height and uh, other stuff you want to set. You can turn around the values to get different first person views. So as third person is concerned, you don't need to change any settings. So we want to discuss more the third person. So, Make sure your get character type is on third person. It's selected to third person, and then let's let's test this. Let's see if this if everything runs fine. Oh, we need to change something. So I'm gonna click on play again.
All right, guys. Um, I figured out what was what made it not to animate. Why the character did not animate is this: the, the third person character needs to be on the top. It must be. It must be on the top of the FPS character in your your hierarchy view. Yeah, basically, if you change to if you change the settings to the the get character type to first person, like first person, as like first man view, you need to drag the first person and place this above the third person. So since we're using the third the, the third person third person mode, the third person uh, guy has to be above the first person. So that once the animator controller goes through the, the child game objects he gets the third person for the first person so let's let, let's click on play and test this you understand what i'm saying now yeah. so we have, a, we have the, an animated robot now so, now to confirm what I was saying, if I should drag this robot guy, third person, and place this underneath the first person, and click on play, the animator controller gets confused. Like, it doesn't, it's unable to find the, the third person because the first person is, is before it in the hierarchy. So, watch. The robot doesn't animate. So you're gonna drag this third person, and place it above the first person. Given that from your character settings, you select the third person view. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the third person camera for the I'm going to go to my camera parent, select the third person camera for the robot there. I'm gonna change the okay now. Let's just change the camera by the camera pivot. I'm going to raise the camera pivot to the top. So put that to the top so that our camera can be we can view the robot from the top, not not below. So let's click on play again and let's try to use the character to, to grab the bike. Let's see what happens. Okay, so click on V. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The robot character seems to be bigger than the bike. <laughs> it looks funny, but at least it's I get to it. We just need, we need to we need to set the arms of the bike of the, of the robot to it. So we need to I get the arms. I have to change the and IK targets a little bit. So let's go back to us our, our simple bike IK support. And then select the go locate the hand IK position. So select your gizmos, make sure the gizmos is selected so we can see our IK points. These black circles represent the IK point IK positions. Sit points the hand IK the, the rest the foot rest and everything. So we're going to select the neck hinge. In the neck hinge, we're going to find the hand IK targets. And I'm going to pull this down a bit. Okay. Then the sit points, I will, I will drag to the top a bit, something like that. And. I'm gonna try to play. Let's play it again and see what happens. I move my character around, jump up, and down. And then click on view. Okay. Let me step on. 
me go back to see. Go back to the left hand and the right hand I could like it. Skip grooves down a bit. Okay, you can lose okay now, but you can also you can you can always start with the values to get what you want. So let's try to add gas to this bike. Watching the robot, the way he's controlling the bike, everything looks like it. Well, to the bike now. We observe the bodies rotating together with the bike motion. Yeah, if you want the legs, the knees of the robot to spread out a bit, you can always, you can always slide the the bike IK support scroll down to IKs and move to the right right leg IK hit target yeah that's for the knee for the knee of the, of the bike of the you can always edit this one you can drag this one out a bit and drag this one out a bit oh, no. Let's see what that does. Oh, sorry. Sorry. We still have our tests. Uh, we didn't delete tests. How about that? So, so let the bike move back. Always make sure you delete your test subject once you are done with the ES grab pair. So I've deleted it now we can click on play. Play, 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 play. Observe the robot knee. It's a bit spread out now compared to before. So if you want your if you want the character's knee to be spread out, you can expand the hint the hint IK target as the right I hint IK target and left hint IK target. You just expand them from each other. You get a spread you get you get a spread knee. So, move around. Just click on, uh, click on the right shift for my front brake. I should click on space bar for shoe brake. Whoa! Okay. I can also I can exit my bike by clicking on this. I can also drag the bike back. guys thanks for watching this video i hope this video was helpful and i'm going to create another video on how to you know change the this bike to the ik uh, sorry to, to to change the user's controller to ai how to activate the, the ai for the bike for the ultimate motorcycle physics thanks for watching if you have any more questions you can always Send me an email.
and I'll reply as soon as possible.